Hello and welcome to another great money method in Grand Turismo 7. So when I think of three iconic Group 1 vehicles, well, I think of the Mazda 787B, the Nissan R92CP and the Jaguar XJR9. So since I've already made a money method for the Mazda 787B, the R92CP, well, that only leaves a Jag. So in today's video, we are going over a 700 performance points build for the Jaguar XJR9. So after the completion of this event, you should earn yourself 825,000 credits. So there are a few things that you're going to need. Mainly, you're going to need the Jaguar XJR9. Now this car comes in the legendary dealership. So if you currently do not own the Jaguar, well, unfortunately, you're gonna have to wait for it to come back into the dealership. But until then, you can check out my channel. There are plenty of other money methods which do not involve vehicles from the legendary dealership. So, if you already do have the Jag, however, well, just follow the tune because this is a really fast 700 pp build. So, without further ado, let's head on over to the tuning sheet. Now, instead of me going over to the tuning shop and showing you all the parts that you must purchase, just follow along with me and listen carefully and I'm going to go through all of the parts you need and you can also see on screen what parts you actually need to purchase. So, for tire compound, we're going to start off on racing hard tires. Now, you also need to purchase either intermediates or racing wets or you could just purchase both because with the event that we are doing, there's an 85% chance of rain occurring, which means you rather have a backup set of tires so you know even with the rainfall occurring you know you are covered and you are safe you do not have to be three laps in then you have to leave the race come back and then you wasted so much time whereas if you were just purchased tires you know you're all good and you are ready to go so so tires racing hard tires racing intermediates or racing wets or even both those are the tire compounds you need for this event so suspension differential as well as the manual adjustment to your transmission does not affect your performance points rating so you can honestly just do your own thing with it but if you want to copy mine the settings are going to be as follows so for suspension your body height adjustments in the front is going to be 63 it's going to be 65 in the rear your anti-roll bars are going to be both 10 for the front and the rear your dampening ratio compression is going to be 40 in the front 38 in the rear your dampening ratio expansion is going to be 50 for both front and rear. Your natural frequency in the front is going to be 4.95 and it is going to be 4.90 in the rear. Your negative camber angle in the front is going to be 3.0, 2.5 in the rear. Now your toe angle is going to be 0 0.10 going outward in the front and then 0 0.20 going inward in the rear. So for your differential, your initial torque is going to be 15, your acceleration sensitivity is going to be 20, and your braking sensitivity is going to be 40. Now, this is actually the standard settings. I do not play around with them, but if you feel like the vehicle needs some tweaking, well, by all means, you go ahead. Now, downforce. This is the key part that will dramatically affect your performance points rating. So, for the front downforce, we're going to set it over to 500 which means the front is going to have the least downforce as possible. So, the rear is going to be set at 1,598, which is just too shy off from being all the way to the right. Now, that means we are going to have almost maxed out downforce in the rear, but don't stress, with this setup, the car still handles incredibly well, so there's nothing to be concerned about. Now your fully customizable ECU, your output is going to be set at 70, you're going to put it all the way to the left. Then your ballast is going to be set at 196, your ballast positioning is going to be at negative 50 and your power restrictor is going to be set at 98. Now for your transmission, we are using the standard transmission, we do not purchase a fully customizable transmission or a fully customizable or just any transmission we're using the standard transmission so we can't even do any manual adjustments and that's because 
if we change the transmission this would have increased the performance points and that would mean we would have to decrease the power of the vehicle then if we go on over to the next page we can see that i added absolutely nothing else to the vehicle which means this is an na build and turns out the na build is actually a bit faster than the turbocharged build because with the turbocharger it adds so much performance points that by the time you have to bring it back down to 700 well then this whole tune is just null and void it's actually faster to go with an na tune than a turbocharged tune so that's exactly what we're doing so now so let me just show you the best way to use the jaguar xjr9 around le mans now when you first begin the race you want to make sure your fuel map is set to fuel map level one this way we have the max power and we go as fast as possible and you don't have to and you don't have to worry about oh running out of fuel because with it being a group one vehicle it has insane fuel efficiency which means it's going to make absolute mince meats of the people you are competing against and since you are in a group one vehicle going up against group four vehicles even on the hardest difficulty this event is an absolute cakewalk it is so it is super easy and super rewarding why I prefer using Le Mans over any other events. Le Mans is one of the few events that have dynamic weather. You get to experience in a whole lot of different vehicles on an iconic circuit. It's super fun and the AI even on the hardest difficulty still makes for a decent race. But sometimes it is completely and utterly easy. So I really like Le Mans. It's a fun circuit. You get to experience top speed and some decent corners so the Jaguar XJR9 with the setup you can see we are traveling well over 310 kilometers per hour and the brake on this vehicle because it is a group one vehicle is insane and frankly setting a lap time around the circuit is sub four minutes if I wasn't slowed down on this particular lap it was gonna be an easy sub four minute lap but because I got slowed down and had to serve a penalty I set a four minutes flat but the car is very capable of doing sub four minute laps so I would say it is closer to the Nissan R92 CP than it is to the Mazda 787B now the Nissan R92 CP is still a bit faster than this because the Nissan is still lighter and it is able to go through corners a lot quicker than the actual Jaguar so if you are trying to decide which is the best out of the three it's gonna be the Nissan then the Jag then the Mazda so I hope this was informative so if you did want to enjoy this and you did try to tune out for yourself well let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of it so thank you so much for your time and if you want to see more Grand Slam 7 videos and want to see more money pulls well Click the video on screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time. Peace.